Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaram of iKnowIndices.com. I'll be presenting the Asian session live market analysis and the forecast webinar now, explaining the expected market moves for each of the days in this particular week. And they will be in the form of session wise forecast for all the three sessions of the day. Then today we are on 26th of September. Between 5 and 5.30 GMT, I will try to explain to you the forecast and also the range in which the currencies are expected to swing in this week and the trading strategy. My contact details are given here, my email ID and Skype chat ID and the website address. So you can make a note of it if you need to contact me for further clarification or any other question. So basically, we need to understand that the players are making the moves in the market. And those moves are of two types. One, the intentional move. The other one is the false move. So they always make a false move before making the intentional move. So the first move will be a false move so that they are able to create the market sentiment and later on when the traders commit position following that particular sentiment, they are able to trap and for that they may use various attributes. They may say that fundamental could be one attribute or it can be the event or a news item which can also can be considered as a triggering point as a result you find they create the sentiment and act against that of the traders so first of all we need to understand what way they are going to create the sentiment and how exactly they are going to act against so when they are creating the sentiment we should commit position and when they reveal their intention we should book profit and this should be our understanding once we understand this then you find trading becomes child's play so they take quite a while time to create the market sentiment and for that they use their own mouthpiece to spread the news besides they also make the market appear following the technicals then automatically involuntarily most of the technical analysts come out with that of their interpretation about the market and the forecast so that will predominantly induce the traders to commit positions so it is a collective move against that of the traders and the technical analyst knowingly or unknowingly participate in that particular process as a result they are supposed to help the traders instead they misguide the traders without their knowledge and then some of the defensive traders or the defensive analyst they come out with either way possibility moves of the market so as a result you find that the traders have to go in for a continuous guessing whether the market will go up or come down go up or come down and in that process they become really mentally tired and in order to reduce that uncertainty i have developed the derived forecast which is a sequential statistical analysis which is referred as an algorithm and with the help of this algorithm i am in a position to give the forecast based on the time frame so mostly you come across the people give the forecast not taking into consideration the time frame they may simply say may say that in a shorter duration or in the long term you know could come down drastically they may say or in a short time frame it could come down and then later on bounce back so they we 
invariably use a vague terminology while addressing the time frame. Whereas my forecast gives the precise time of the day so that you'll be able to see that the time really works well in line with that of the forecast. So when you have the forecast giving the trend in a specified time frame, then it is easy for us to take an appropriate trading decision. Okay, we should do in this particular time frame a buy and sell trade. In this particular time frame, a sell and buy trade. That sort of decisions you will be able to do it. So that will reduce our uncertainty to a greater extent. Then besides, these forecasts are for n number of times or n number of days. So if you want to know the forecast, what will happen next year in 2017, February 13, what could be the move? I'll be able to give the prediction. But whatever I give it for a long time frame, then when that particular appropriate time comes, then it is better to Take, in, take into consideration the current scenario because the market is dynamic. Why we call it it's dynamic? Because so many traders come in and so many traders go out. So in that process, you find the market volume varies from time to time depending upon the market sentiments created, depending upon the capabilities of the traders, depending upon the fund positions of the traders, and also when they, the level of greed and panic conditions. So when the level of greed is very high, when the traders find that it is very easy to make money from the other market, then they come with big bets. And when the economic condition is good, when they have got surplus funds, then automatically they wish to take certain amount of high risk by deploying certain amount of fund into that other market. Then they go in for the trading. The other condition wherein the traders come for trading is because of wants. So they have to necessarily generate about $10,000, $20,000 in a shorter time frame which they may not be in a position to generate by doing a hard work. In such a scenario, they come with some capital to that of the market and try to use it in order to earn big, thereby they'll be able to meet the requirement. So the traders come to the market with varied intentions. So because of varied intentions from time to time, the market might show variation with regard to that of the volume. And also, the traders might come commit the positions either way. Some traders might take sell position, certain other traders might take buy position, so that you come across an equilibrium happening in the market, thereby you are able to see the swings. But there are certain occasions wherein you come across the traders develop herd mentality. Because of that, all traders will take one-sided positions. When there is an extreme drop in Euro or GBB, then all traders think that it is worthwhile taking a buy position rather than doing a sell and buy trade. When all come in buy positions, what happens? The players are not willing to give profit for such traders. And when the traders are holding buy positions, automatically such buy positions are filled by that of the players. So the players sold and which was bought by that of the traders. So do you think the players will rise the market and give them philanthropically the profit? Not at all. They will make a one more drop in the market. Then automatically, those who had taken buy positions think that it is a falling knife 
it is not appropriate to hold the by position even though it appears to be the lowest level then once the traders wither all the positions then you find the players buy such cells at the lowest level start gaining the level so this is the way they do it and we need to understand what sort of moves they are going to do it in the market and based on that only if we commit position in a specific currency pair then we will be able to easily earn money from that other market so the market reading we do it for each session mainly to identify the currency in which we can commit positions so that we will be able to earn quickly besides we also see which pair they are handling at a given time by comparing the distance between the high and the low whether the spread between high and the low is more than 40 pips so that we understand that the players are going to handle those currencies and especially the players make moves in the majors in order to bring in the moves in their respective crosses so we follow the majors by looking into that of the four majors and the two commodity pairs thereby we'll be able to understand what they are trying to do at a given time now look into that of the market you find here with gbb as well as usd i'm showing positive net change and chf canadian dollar and australian dollar are showing negative net change you find a contrarian move so here you find euro gbp showing positive net change as usd weakening move whereas usd yen is showing positive net change as the usd gaining move and you find chf is showing negative net change as a usd weakening move and Canadian dollar showing negative net change as the USD weakening move. But Australian dollar is also showing negative net change, showing USD gaining move. So when they make such USD weakening as well as USD gaining moves in different pairs, in different conditions, by looking into the, the net change, we are able to understand the net change is nothing but that level, the current market level, when compared to that of the previous day close. Here the previous day close happens to be Friday US session close. Then you find they are making contrarian move. When they make such contrarian move, we know that they are handling the crosses. So we have to wait for them to come to that of the majors and then try to commit positions in majors so that we will be able to get profit. If they are handling the crosses, then you have to study the crosses and accordingly take positions in the crosses thereby you will be able to earn money quickly from that of the market finally we need to use the trading strategy whatever be the effort we put in and try to read the market and try to use the forecast all those things but suddenly knee-jerk reactions can happen in the market suddenly a rumor can happen suddenly somebody might demise in such a situation, you find that the market will go in for an euphoric condition. When the market goes for an euphoric condition or a distress, either way move condition or a whipsaw moves, then we need to protect our equity. We cannot simply say that it is unfortunate because of the event we lost that account. There's no point in telling like that. We need to have the contingency plan or we need to plan before so that we will be able to conservatively, conservatively protect the equity. Simply telling that conservatively you have to protect your equity, you have to be conservative and things like that is of no use unless and otherwise you should know the measures by which you have to be conservative. One method is non-committing in the market. That is, you don't take any position, automatically you are conserving the equity. At the same time, you don't earn any money from that of the market. So it is nothing but a frightful condition. Out of fear, you are not in a position to commit. And you can be an opportunity trader. Wait for the good time to enter into the, the market whenever there is a big move happening in the market. But you need to understand that you should have that logical understanding and quick-wittedness in order to commit the positions in the market and 
then when you are committing the position, you should be able to limit the risk. For that, we use the trading strategy. Now let me explain to you the forecast. So this is the last week of the month of September. The market is to exhibit volatile move. So when there is a volatile move in the market, we need to understand that the players are going to make some whip some moves in the market. That is, they will quickly gain and quickly drop the levels in order to hit the stops and earn as much as possible in order to meet the monthly target. In such a situation, we have to be very, very careful in committing the position and also use the appropriate trading strategy to limit the risk. As soon as the position is taken, keep hedging order to limit the risk. And then once the position makes profit, keep stop at entry and remove the hedge order. And then use the trailing stop in a profit making position. And also keep the trailing take profit order. As a result, the market will be able to protect your profit. So that way you can do it. And especially with regard to the session wise trade, what you can do is we have about five to seven hours of each session. And in such a situation, when they are making a swing and slide, that means they will gain quickly the levels during early part of the Japanese session and slowly come down. So you can understand that when they are making sell and buy trade, that means they just quickly gain the level and build a sell position and slowly slide and induce the traders to commit a liquidate the long position so in that case we can do sell and buy trade during such move and swing and rise mean they will make lower level swing that is swing near that of the low set for the day and slowly gain the level towards late european session that is what it refers to you can focus on the session wise trade and then we'll be able to understand quickly about 30 40 pips you will be able to earn in each of the session trades if you are keeping awake for two sessions that's fine you can carefully do the trades in those two sessions and commit positions only in currencies wherein the spread between the high and the low is more than 40 pips in order to make quick profit and if the spread between the high and the low is less than 40 pips avoid taking any position so that you will be able to conserve the equity then tomorrow they are expected to make the swing and slide during that of the Japanese session and then firm up and rise during European and US session. Then on Wednesday they are expected to gain more the level swing and gain, swing and rise they are expected to do. And Thursday they are expected to make the swing and slide. After gaining all the levels, they are expected to build up sell positions, start sliding, and pretend as if they are going to rise again, and then start sliding. Then that will give a bearish feel in the market. And finally, on the last day of the September, they are expected to make the swing and slide, and then finally drop during that of the US session. So that way, they are expected to induce all the long holders to liquidate their long positions in distress condition for the month end. This they do it mainly to handle the derivative market as well. In the derivative market, pe people take the futures and the options market, varied positions, high level buy or low level sell, etc. In such a situation, you will be in a position to find the market is expected to make some extreme volatile moves. When they make such extreme volatile moves, it is appropriate for us to do swing trades and not position trades. And either way, you can do a buy near that of the low, book profit near that of the high, and sell near that of the high set for the day. When the new high has not been breached for more than 30 minutes, then book profit during the slide. And that way you can do either way trades during the, the 
month and time. Then next week will be the first week of October. There again, the monthly trend reversal moves. They are expected to make it for one week. So this time you come across all the five days of the month end of September, all the five days of the month beginning of October, they are expected to bring in the monthly trend reversal moves. So for a period of 10 days, they are expected to make very volatile moves in the market, carefully trade and earn money from that of the market. There is a question you told in your webinar about the significance of live market put page. Using live market put page, one can uh, find the contrarian moves. Take today's scenario at 5 GMT. If three pair majors are in contrarian with other three, would now be would be going with a USD weakening move or okay so when they are making the contrarian move here is question is would it be going with the usd weakening move of the majors okay now when they are making such contrarian move his question is whether we have to go in for the USD weakening move or the USD gaining move. That is what is doubt, I suppose. Now, as I told you, 26th today, Japanese session, they are expected to make the swing and slide. So we are in the late Japanese session, 5.30 to 7 GMT. So in the late Japanese session, they are expected to make the tip, a slide, about 20, 30 tips. And then later on, during the, the European session, they are expected to make the lower level swing and rise. So when they are making the slide and lower level swing, see that how they are handling the initial low they are set. And if they don't breach the initial low, or if they breach the initial low and stop cutting the new low for 30 minutes during the late Japanese or early European, to take a buy. Then during the rise by 13 GMT, 12.30 to 13 GMT, you'll be able to book profit. So this forecast is meant for Euro and GBP. So follow that and you'll be able to make use of it. Now, with regard to the denominator currency, USDN is showing negative net change and CHF is showing negative net change. Canadian dollar is showing negative net change that means all the three pairs are showing the usd weakening move and you know that in the case of the denominators the volume is relatively less when compared to that of the numerator when the volume is less invariably they go in for either way stoppings so in the case of chf and canadian dollar they make either way stoppings but in the case of yen the volume is relatively moderate when compared to the rest of the denominator currencies. Then also in the case of USD Yen, uh, in the case of Yen, the respective crosses with Euro and GBP, namely Euro Yen and GBP Yen, the volume is relatively good. So they make one-sided move in the case of USD Yen. As a result, you find very big volatile move in the case of Yen crosses. So you have to understand the behavior of the respective currencies and then commit positions. So a perfect understanding of the currency is vital. How the players are handling the specific currency depending upon the volume variation from time to time. If you look into the law of CHR, most of the time you'll find it will be subdued and making either way stop -ups. In the case of Canadian dollar also like that, but there are, if there are prime events when the predominant of the traders are going to focus on those currencies, then you come across big moves happening in those currencies in the case of CHF and Canadian dollar. Otherwise, normally, the traders commit positions in Euro and GBP as well as USDN and Australian dollar and relatively less volume in Australian dollar. So these three pairs are the prime currency. They are 
being handled or they are being uh, viewed with interest, more interest by that of their traders. That is why you come across more volume. And also in the respective process, why people go in for a process? If there is a data event pertaining to that of US dollar, then you find predominant of the traders, instead of keeping sideways, they commit positions in crosses. Then they go in for trading in crosses. At such a situation, you find the crosses attract more volume. So you have to understand how they are handling it by making a contrarian move and also making more than 40 pips spread between the low and the high in any two currency and that corresponding cross they are handling. And then you commit position in such cross, will be able to really see quick profit. Now, these are all the levels in which the currencies are expected to swing in this week. Could come across sudden rise in the case of euro after making a, some drop in order to handle euro GBP cross. And here's GBP is also expected to make a brief sideways move and a dip and then later on quickly gain and drop the level. And in the case of yen, they're expected to make the lower level consolidation and then try to gain the level. And also in the case of CHF, they are expected to gain the levels. And in the case of Canadian dollar, last week they just made the lower level swing and gained the level. This week they could make the high level swing and slide. Then in the case of Australian dollar, they are expected to make the lower level swing and slowly gain the level. So watch for those levels and try to take appropriately the positions so that you will be able to really get about 100 to 200 pips profit in your swing trades. Now we'll do the market reading with the help of the initial lows and the highs, what I noted down by 330 GMT. So in the case of Euro 1.1226 is the low, 1.1242 is the high. They don't breach the low or the high, indicating that they are simply consolidating. The net change is also zero. In the case of GBP, 1.2955 is the low, 1.2987 is the high. They are not breach the low or the high. Also, in the case of yen, 100.71, 101.09, they are not breach the low or the high, indicating that they are handling nominally the yen and yen crosses by making slow moves either way. By making contrarian and regular moves, they are trying to just make small swings in the crosses during mid session. And in the case of CHF, also 96.90 is the low, 97.07 is the high. They are not breached the low or the high. But in the case of Canadian dollar and Australian dollar, they handled the pairs. 1.3149 is the low, 1.3178 was the initial high. They just breached and went up to 1.3180. And in the case of Australian dollar, 9608 was the initial low. They have just breached it by one pip. And 97, sorry, seven, uh, 7607 has become the new low. And the high is not being breached, 7681. And you know that during that of the monthly trend reversal, they make the sequential trend reversal. That is, they handle the commodity crosses. That is why you find in the case of Canadian dollar and Australian dollar, they just breached the high in the case of USD CAD and low in the case of Australian dollar, indicating that they are handling the commodity crosses to start with. Then afterwards, they will handle the commodities as USD CAD and Australian dollar. Then later on, they will come to the top the yen and yen crosses so commodity crosses then commodity pairs yen crosses and yen then majors all the four majors they will handle then finally the european crosses this is how they will make the sequential trend reversal during that of the month end and the new month beginning time so accordingly you choose the currency pairs you will be able to easily see the profit in them then you mean australian dollar volume is more than chf canadian dollar or 
given a normal day yes most likely you find australian dollar volume is more especially the numerators the volume is more when compared to that of the denominators where did you get the opening range see we all we get the opening range everything from that of the live market put page in the live market put page 0030 you come across the opening range is being set and then subsequently they set the initial low on the high around 330 gmt see i was using this particular uh, live market put page but subsequently the providers have just changed the gmt time frame to that of the local us time purposely in order to avoid me using it but still i'm using it what i do is i just use the code page and the gmt time from my website because in my website for those of you not in a position to calculate the gmt time you come across that this is my website i know industries.com there you come across your local time as well as the gmt time mentioned so it calculates the time difference between the gmt and your local time and constantly give you the gmt time for you to monitor the market so that way you can use the gmt time from this page and the code from that of the live market put page you note down from that of the live market put page the initial lows and the highs at times they also uh, give the previous day or the day before and things like that the codes you have to always compare it with it of your trading platform in order to avoid being misguided because see when the uh, brokers when they find that the traders are using any specific tool in order to make successful trade they try to misguide the traders because only when the traders lose money the brokers earn so this is all all cunning way of i mean just telling all the traders that the, the brokers are here to extend all the support actually they are very cunning they act against that of the traders besides the players so you have to understand that and still we should try to earn it is something like swing swing swim against the tide but still you should not become fatigue So it is not 2.30 to 3.30 Eastern time, it is 2.30 to 3.30 GMT time. That is what, here 3.30 GMT, note down. Because this is also giving live, this is also giving live. So when it comes to 3.30 GMT here, you make a note of it. Okay. Now coming to that of the trades for the day, here you find that I kept the levels near that of the initial low. They are likely to breach the initial low in the case of Euro during that of the late session slide. At the time you pick up the buy and later on during the European session, they are expected to gain the level then book profit. Then small dip in the case of GBP also take a buy. And also in the case of USDN, they are likely to make a downward stop and in when euro and GBP we are making a slide because they are making contrarian move now so when they make a downward stop and you pick up the buy then you will be able to quickly put profit and similarly in the case of australian dollar they cut the initial low they are likely to come down a little more and then start gaining the level during european session at the time you buy and put profit during the of the european session rise Now these are all the market timings so early japanese late japanese they handle the pages and mid japanese session they handle the process 5 30 onwards the late japanese session starts you can see suddenly they will make quick moves in the case of majors you'll be able to really understand when those times come they reverse the market trend then you'll be able to understand how precisely 
they follow these timings and fortunately i was able to grab the timings by various methods and confirmed it and that i am sharing with you and you should not think that it is a wasteful exercise we just look into the double i market code page and compare the market with regard to these timings you will find exactly the market is being manipulated based on these time frames and you look into that of the majors as well as the crosses you'll find mid session they will handle crosses then again they will come to majors if you look into the chart you will think that okay they are making upward downward okay they are that of resistance near that of support like that you will be studying but if you want to relate the time with regard to the market move then you find okay this time i should enter this time i should exit you will be able to really fine tune your trading rather than keep guessing now we come across fx trade has come out with the uh, trader of the year context and it is a demo trading context the details are there in fxtrade.com slash info slash context there you will be able to find how exactly the traders participate and do trades in a demo trading account and show their skill set their trading ideas because they have the prices but more than that you get the international recognition if you are a good trader and as i told you if you follow all the guidelines what i have given it and participate in it you'll be able to really succeed in winning condition so i wish you all the best and also i want two people to take part and find out where you stand so that a self assessment will be able to really make you to feel whether i can do the trade or just quit trading Okay, Satish. Uh, for trading platform, do you recommend MT as MT for a platform is very slow with the internet service provided. What is your optimum speed for the USD MT? See, uh, the net speed is not very important because most of the trading platforms are able to offer a high speed, and also you know, they work with such. Uh, cookies you will be able to get the codes very fast and also execution provided you have an optimal network and the speed and you can choose any platform for that matter but don't be aggressive only when you are aggressive you need to have such conditions otherwise be a calm trader use your common sense and trade you will be able to really make good profit so i'll come back on friday and give the next asian session live market analysis and review of the forecast what i gave it so i take this opportunity to thank fx trade for the facilities provided to present the webinar and i'll come back on friday and review the forecast what i have given and also you can find out how exactly the players are making the moves in the market in line with the double forecast that will give you the credibility of the forecast and also the dependability thereby you will be able to really follow the forecast follow the market reading and use the trading strategy to build up your equity wish you all happy trading see you on friday